The U.S. Air Force. Perhaps there is no greater example of a barrier breaker than the U.S. Air Force. It is in their heritage. When looking at that heritage, it all began with an original barrier breaker, General Billy Mitchell, more commonly known as the father of the U.S. Air Force, who set into motion a technology, arms, and innovation race which continues to this day, forever changing the world. Billy Mitchell was born in 1879, a time of extreme change in America. A nation still healing from the deep wounds of civil war, the only constant during this period was change. It was also a time of industrial revolution, including the early stages of flight in America. A son of a wealthy senator from Wisconsin, he was privileged enough to witness the first flight of the Wright brothers. Barriers were being broken all around him, and he longed to be a part of it. Joining the army, he swiftly rose through the ranks and was promoted as an officer. During World War I, Mitchell earned his name as a staunch advocate for air power and commanded nearly 1,500 British, French, and Italian aircraft in one of the first air ground offensives in history. By the end of the war, he commanded all American air combat units in France and was recognized as one of the top American combat airmen of the war. Following the war, Mitchell was appointed as Assistant Chief of the Air Service by President Warren Harding and promoted to the permanent rank of Brigadier General. His strong belief that air power would become the predominant force of war, he ordered the use of aircraft in fighting forest fires, encouraged the staging of an air race around the country, and encouraged pilots to violate flight rules to break aviation records for speed and altitude. Mitchell was trying to break barriers his superiors believed were not meant to be broken. By violating numerous standards set in place by the military, Mitchell was bringing to view the power of aviation. The Army's role, it, as Mitchell saw it, was to fight the battles on the land. Mm -hmm. And the Navy's role was to protect the coast. But the air, this new air service, or if you will, an air force, even though it wasn't called that, would take the war to the enemy, destroy the enemy's homeland, wreck their target, wreck their, their factories. They couldn't build planes, they couldn't build ships, they couldn't build tanks, they couldn't build anything if the factories were bombed. And so the idea would be, let's take the war to the enemy. And then we won't need a large army. We won't need a large navy. The Air Force can do all of this itself. However, while the public saw air power as this new revolutionary capability, Mitchell's superiors were unconvinced. So the Navy challenged him to do the impossible, sink a captured German battleship using only air power. The Ostfriesland was considered the unsinkable crown jewel of the German naval fleet during World War I, and the Navy believed Mitchell was surely to fail this challenge. And so, in 1921, Mitchell set out to prove his point. Mitchell started by gathering several known pilots of that time and training them extensively in flying bombers, specifically the Martin NBS-1. On July 21st, 1921, under the observation of a doubtful army and navy, Mitchell put his preparations into action. First was an attack by aircraft carrying 1,000 pound bombs, and then the big guns were sent in. Six Martin NBS 1s dropped 2,000 pound bombs on the Ostfriesland. After only 22 minutes, the unthinkable, the unsinkable, was sunken. July 1921, an epic chapter from Air Force history. 
airplanes under command of Brigadier General Billy Mitchell proved that warships are vulnerable to attack from the air. The target, a captured German super battleship, the Ostfriesland. Under the hammering of aerial attack, the thought-to-be unsinkable prize of war goes down. Following the great success of the aerial demonstration, Mitchell declared, The day has passed when armies on the ground or navies on the sea can be the arbiter of a nation's destiny in war. The main power of defense and the power of initiative against an enemy has passed to the air. Nonetheless, the Army and Navy remained skeptical, citing that Mitchell did not conduct these tests under wartime conditions. President Harding was also angered by an apparent demonstration of naval weakness. Nevertheless, the test was highly influential at the time, causing military budgets to be redrawn for further air development and equal embarrassment to the doubtful senior leaders of the Army and Navy. Due to his passion, Mitchell experienced difficulties with an army that was not ready for change and often continued to sharply criticize senior leaders. In September 1925, following the crash of the naval rigid airship Shenandoah, which killed 14 of the crew, Mitchell issued a public statement accusing army and navy leaders of incompetence and almost treasonable administration of the national defense. This outburst would be his last. In October 1925, at the direction of President Calvin Coolidge, Mitchell was charged with eight violations of the Articles of War related to insubordination and faced a military court-martial. This was the moment his senior leaders had long awaited, and they stacked the 13-member jury with military officials who had no aviation experience but Mitchell remained unapologetic. If being a good soldier is your kind of good soldier, of being unable to think for himself and say what he thinks, of being narrow and blind and insensible to a higher duty, you can have the uniform and all that goes with it. Among those who testified for Mitchell were aviation legends Eddie Rickenbacker, Hap Arnold, Carl Spotts, Ira Eaker, and Robert Olds. Despite his defense, Mitchell was found guilty and was suspended for five years. Choosing, however, to resign, Mitchell did so on February 1st, 1926, and spent the next decade writing and preaching air power to all who would listen. Tragically, in 1936, at the young age of 56, Billy Mitchell died of a variety of health problems and was buried in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Although he never lived to see it, history would prove Mitchell correct. He's the first person who's in America who saw the truth of, of air power. If Billy Mitchell did not act America wouldn't have developed air power when it did. It would have waited and waited and waited until it might have been too late. The advancement of aviation leading up to World War II was immense and played one of the largest roles in the war. The Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor happened almost exactly as he predicted more than 30 years earlier. And in 1947, the U.S. Air Force was established, with Billy Mitchell being named its father. Later on, he would also be posthumously promoted to the rank of Major General. Billy Mitchell was a true barrier breaker, the original. He inspired an aviation movement, a revolution of innovation, that forever changed the world and continues to shape the future. <laughs>